Imagine you want to draw a picture that shows somebody an object that's in motion. But you don't just want to show the object moving. You want them to be able to look at the picture and know how fast the object is moving. You want them to be able to tell if it's speeding up or if it's slowing down or if it's stopped. Uh, all of these things are challenging to show in a picture because we usually think of pictures as being still. And usually a picture can only show a single moment in time. What we're going to work on today is drawing motion diagrams, which are diagrams that specifically have been created to help students, to help physicists, to help scientists see an object in motion, even though the image itself is static. Um, so I'm going to draw you guys uh, our very first motion diagram. Uh, I think I'll draw two, and hopefully by looking at the two, you can understand the difference between the first one and the second. Um, I'll draw, let's say, let's draw a hillside. Uh, and I'm going to draw, uh, in fact, this is going to be the exact same hillside, and I'm just going to draw two different objects going down on it. So you can kind of think of this like, really, this, uh, these should be going down in parallel, but for convenience sake, I've, I've split them up. So the first object, looks like that. The second object that you see beautiful. So we see these objects going down the hill. Um, an important thing to know about uh, motion diagrams is they always have some kind of defined time interval that they're showing. For this one, we'll call our time interval, our change in time, is always equal to one second. So that means that if this was time zero, this was where it was at zero seconds, this is where this object is after one second. This is where the object is after two seconds. This is where our object is after three seconds and where our object is after four seconds. For our next one, we have uh, time zero. I guess we should have seconds even there. Uh, time, after, time after one second, time after two seconds, time after three seconds, and it keeps going, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. Okay, so looking at these two objects and the way that it's been represented, can you tell which one's going faster? Um, if this hill is, say, 100 meters long, which one, object A or object B, gets to the bottom of the hill first? And I'm hoping you can already tell. Object A is going much faster. In the same period of time, object A covers three, or actually we should probably do some trade to get the exact value, uh, but op it covers three-ish units, uh, while object B only covers two-ish units along the diagonal. Uh, that means that after, say, uh, two seconds, and we can see it right here, object A is here, object B is still back here. And as they go down the hill, that, that will only increase uh, the magnitude of difference between their uh, positions. So this is a motion diagram. It shows the position of objects over regular intervals, and by looking at it and seeing how the spacing uh, increases or decreases, or in this case stays the same, we get a sense of uh, what its speed is between the, between the moments that are shown, uh, and how its speed is changing overall. Uh, so this is uh, one set of motion diagrams. I'm going to, I have some space where uh, here-ish, uh, uh, anyways, two screens. Uh, so I have some space over there. So I'm going to draw one more set of objects, uh, and we'll practice noticing the difference between them. Uh, so this time, instead, uh, I'm just going to do a flat plane. That'll let us do our distances a little bit better. That is not a flat plane. Uh, close enough. Um, and let's draw an object. Again, it, what the object is doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to use these dots to represent woolly mammoths. Uh, so 
This is a woolly mammoth. Uh, it is a non-extinct woolly mammoth, which explains why it's moving. Um, so we brought them back from the dead. Woohoo! Go science! Uh, so, let's see. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you guys noticed what just happened, but we had our woolly mammoth that was here at time zero, and then at one second, oops, I just crossed my teeth, uh, at one second, whew, it moved to there. It moved a whole three units. Exciting stuff. Then, and this is where things get exciting, for its next time period, after the next second, four units. This is the good stuff. This is why you come to physics for the excitement <laughs> and for me to draw T's wrong all the time. Um, all right, then he moved five units the next time. Okay, exciting stuff. Now let's go down here. But this is a different woolly mammoth. This is this is the woolly mammoth that like is competing against our first uh, woolly mammoth. All right, time, time zero, time one, time two, time three. You'll notice four units, four units, four units. But what I want you to think about is, what is the difference between the way that these two woolly mammoths are moving? How does woolly mammoth, uh, this is Steve, uh, and then, Uh, we have also woolly mammoth Steve. It's a, with a PH, but he pronounces it as a V. Uh, so how does woolly mammoth Steve with a V compare to woolly mammoth Steve with a PH? The real question is, who's further along at T4 if the pattern continues? So think about it, think about it for a sec. Pause the video if you want to take a little bit more time. And yeah, if you said Steve with a V is going to be faster uh, at uh, time four or have traveled more distance, you're probably correct. It looks like Steve with a V is speeding up, while Steve with a PH, he's going at the same uh, the same pace. Steve with a PH is the reason why woolly mammoths went extinct. Steve with a V, if he'd existed back in the day, woolly mammoths would probably rule the world. And that's why you come to physics for the important biology facts. But also this, hopefully this helped you start understanding how motion diagrams work.